As we do the series, we are running through the book of Hebrews. Praise the Lord. And the last two Sundays, we, we studied the first and second verses of Hebrews. Praise the Lord. And Hebrew, as Hebrews is starting, the Bible introduces Jesus as a superior Savior. Praise the Lord. He is our Savior that is superior than every other thing. In, in, in chapter 1, they compare him to angels, prophets, and name it. Praise the Lord. But then the Bible says he is the superior salvation. He is the salvation that mankind has been waiting for for years. Praise the Lord. Then in chapter 2, we look at Jesus as the captain of our salvation. Simon preached last Sunday and told you how this man, he, he spearheads our salvation. Praise the Lord. He has gone through the life we have gone through. He became man and suffered the life that we suffer so that he might be able to save us from everything that entangles us. Praise the Lord. He even suffered death so that death can have no hold on us anymore. Praise the Lord. That making him the captain of our salvation. He's taking us through life. He's saving us through things he has gone through as a person but yet God. Praise the Lord. So this Sunday we are going to look more on how we can embrace this man named Jesus. Praise the Lord. And I've named this Simon Siri, do not harden your heart. But it's more about belief. But do not harden your heart. Because every time your heart is hardened, then you are in unbelief. Praise the Lord. Yes, we shall open our Bibles in the book of Hebrews chapter Hebrews chapter 3, verses 1. It is a big text, so we shall go bit by bit until we finish. Praise the Lord. So I want us to read the first verse. If you don't mind, we can read together. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. The Bible is starting with the word therefore. Therefore is a connection. From the previous chapter, us seeing Jesus as the captain of our salvation. Then connecting from that, the writer is telling us, Therefore, now that Jesus is the captain of your salvation, now that Jesus is the one saving you from all entanglements of life, let us consider him the apostle and high priest of our confession. Praise the Lord. Considering is taking something serious. Carefully thinking through something. Praise the Lord. We carefully think through him. As the someone series stands, we've got the best. And until you understand that you have the best, you can never be the best. Praise the Lord. I, I was somewhere and Pastor Alex was talking about the iPhone. He has an iPhone XR. And he was talking so much about this iPhone that if you gave it to his son, he would play with it, kick it around, and break it because he does not know how precious that iPhone is. But for someone who understands it, they will hold it with care because there's so much it can do. It is the same with us, with our salvation. Jesus is the best thing that has ever happened to man. Praise the Lord. And until you understand the best thing that you have, you can never, never live in the fullness of it. Praise the Lord. So now that we know that Jesus is the captain of our salvation, let us consider him carefully, the priest and apostle of our confession. Praise the Lord. We do not just believe accept him as our Lord and Savior, but we consider him carefully so that we can live in the fullness of what he did for us. Praise the Lord. Let us go on in chapter 2, verse 2. The Bible says, Who was faithful to him who appointed him as Moses also was faithful to all his house. Praise the Lord. Faithfulness. Jesus was a good steward to what God gave him. When you, apostle means sent, Jesus was sent to us. Praise the Lord. And now when he was appointed by his father, he was faithful to that appointment. He would have backed out. Because he was God. 
yet was being despised by men. He had the power to even slay all of them and kill them if he wanted. But he had to be faithful to the mission that brought him to earth. Praise the Lord. So consider this man who was faithful. Consider this man who left all his glory in heaven and came on earth just to die for you. What have you given him? Nothing. But he left all the glory and came here to die for a sinner like you who does not even care whether there is redemption for them. But because of his love, he was faithful. In the garden of Gethsemane, the man cried and told his father, Father, if it is possible, you would take this cup away from me. And that was close to his death, his very shameful death. A death on the cross, the most shameful death there is. So when he had, he almost backed out. But then he said that not my will, but your will be done. So let us consider this man that was faithful to that call. Because if he was not faithful, none of us would be here. Praise the Lord. Think about him carefully. Let us go ahead. In, in verse 3 he says, For this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who built the house has more honor than the house. Praise the Lord. Jesus is glorious. If he had not gone through with the suffering on the cross and the death on the cross, probably we will not even be talking about him right now. But the man was glorious. He won the battle. He did. He won the battle. He became shameful. He went, took back the keys of life and death. And he em disempowered the enemy. The enemy, the devil. And for that, he became glorious. He is such a glorious father that he's, he's seated at the right hand of the father. And while seated there, he is still interceding on behalf of us. Every time you fall short, he tells his father, please have mercy. Have mercy on Martha. Have mercy on Becky. Because he is a glorious girl. Praise the Lord. So he is so glorious more than Moses. Moses did amazing things. God used him to do so many miracles. The man separated the Red Sea. He hit the rock and it brought water. He would talk to God face to face. He would come out of, he would come out of a princess of God glowing that people could not even stand looking at him. So the man was glorious, but his kind of glory did not save mankind. But the glory that we are talking about is the one that Jesus suffered. And now you and me are not just right with God, but we can approach God without fear or trembling. Praise the Lord. So that makes this man so glorious, more than Moses, that many may think was glorious. Praise the Lord. Let's continue. For every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is God. Go on. And Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which would be spoken after. Go on. But Jesus Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are if we hold fast the confidence of the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. Praise the Lord. Moses was faithful to what God called him to do. Despite his problem with speech, despite him being a murderer back in Egypt, wanted, the man was wanted, very scared to go back, but he went back and was faithful to what God called him to do. But now, look at our Jesus. He was faithful and, glor and is now glorious. But not only that, he is a son over his own house. And that house we are 
if we hold fast the confidence. Praise the Lord. So he did not just die for us and go back and enjoy the heavenly places. The man died and he lives inside of us. Everyone who accepts him as his Lord and Savior, he enters your life. He resides in you. Praise the Lord. And whatever he is, you are. If Jesus never feels sick, you have no right to be sick. Because you carry the man himself. You carry such a great thing. That's why we say we have the best. We have the best. That everywhere we should go, we should flourish. Because what we have is everything. What we have is everything. The man is the answer to everything in this life. And we carry him within us. But if we hold fast that confidence, what is that confidence? He removed your sins. He is your redemption. He came that you might have life and life in abundance. He became that you may be free. You may live a life of freedom. He overcame death so that you may not be scared of death anymore. He disempowered the devil that he has no hold on you anymore. He removed your sins. So he's everything. That is the confidence that we hold till the end. Praise the Lord. And we house such a confidence within us. Let's go ahead. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion in the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works for tears. Praise the Lord. He's saying, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. That's why I'm saying that we should not harden our hearts. Let us hear his voice. If you accepted him as your Lord and Savior, if you believe that your sins are covered, if you believe that you are free from death and every entanglement of sin, then do not harden your heart. Praise the Lord. He continues and says that do not harden your heart like in rebellion, like your fathers did. Which fathers is he talking about? The children of Israel. When you read in Numbers, as they were leaving Egypt, God saved them. He made such amazing things for them. He separated the Red Sea. He protected them from the Egyptians. He gave them possessions. He, he, he protected them in the night with a pillar of fire. He led them with a cloud during the day. What did, Jesus, what did God do for those people? He rained food from heaven. They were tired of, they were, they were tired of eating wheat. And they wanted meat. God provided. They were thirsty. He fed them. Praise the Lord. But even despite that, these people reached to the point that all they have to do is to enter the promised land, the land that flows with milk and honey. Praise the Lord. And when they spied, the spies came back and told them, you know what? Ah, we are dead. Those guys are giants. Actually, they say the people that inhabit, the inhabitants of the land are giants. And for us, we are like grasshoppers. Praise the Lord. That was an insult to God. And many times we've insulted God. Praise the Lord. God felt so insulted because he separated the Red Sea. Who does that? No one has separated the Red Sea ever again. Praise the Lord. He opened up. He rained food from heaven. He, he got water from the... He did so much for those people to only come and look at themselves as grasshoppers and the heathens, giants. He was so insulted. And for that reason, he said, they will never enter my rest. Praise the Lord. Even us as Christians today, we have insulted God many times. Despite all that he has done for us, the man gave up his son. He loved his son so much, but because of us, he's like, you know what? Have him. He gave him up. He let him go 
so that you and me can be made right again with God, so that we might not be in bondage of sin any longer. Praise the Lord. But even what, despite what he did, we still do not believe. When trials come, we're timid. We run to other things. And it's because of that that God feels insulted. The children of Israel insult, insulted God. And they said, for that reason, they will not enter the promised land. Praise the Lord. Let's move on. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and say, they always go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath that they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Praise the Lord. Actually, the Bible is calling unbelief an evil heart. Every time we do not believe, we do not just insult God, but we are carrying evil within us. Praise the Lord. It is an evil heart of unbelief. And because of that an evil heart, the children of Israel did not enter the promised land. And it's because of that unbelief that many of us are walking in circles in our lives. Praise the Lord. He actually said that for that reason, he let them be in the, in the, in the wilderness for 40 years. 40 years. A journey of two days took them 40 years. Why? Because of unbelief. Praise the Lord. He left them rotating circles, hoping that one day they will believe, but they did not. It is the same. Many of us, your life is the same yesterday and forever. Because we have the best. We have been created for better things, but because we have refused to believe the better things, then our lives are the same. Praise the Lord. Let us move on. But exalt one another daily while it is called, still called today. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. He keeps on saying, while it is still today, hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Let's move on. For we have become partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steady fast to the end. Praise the Lord. When Christ died, he died for you and me. He died that we might be better people. He did not die that we might remain in sin. He did not die that we might remain in the life that the enemy has put us in. So because of that, we became partakers of Christ. Whatever Christ is, we are. Praise the Lord. If the Bible says that he is the righteousness of God, you are righteous. He is the son of God and whoever believes in him, he has given the right to become a son. So we are no longer orphans. We do not go to God as people who do not know. We go to him as our father and claim our inheritance. Praise the Lord. The Bible calls us co heirs with him. We are partakers of Christ. Praise the Lord. That is who we are. That is who God has created us to be. But because of unbelief, we are living below what we are supposed to be. Praise the Lord. We are created for bigger. We are created for better through Christ Jesus our Lord. He went to the cross so that we might. Praise the Lord. He was beaten so that we might be healed. By his stripes we are healed. He became poor so that we might be rich. Praise the Lord. He suffered all those things for us so that we might live a better life. So every time we live in unbelief, we declare God and Jesus' suffering of no use. Like the man suffered for nothing. He was beaten for nothing if we cannot believe that his stripes actually heal us. 
He suffered, he suffered shame for us. But if we do not believe it, then his death on the cross is for nothing. Praise the Lord. Let's move. Well, it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt, led by Moses? Now with whom was he angry 40 years? Was it not with, the, with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they will not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? Praise the Lord. That is what we were talking about, about the children of Israel. Because of unbelief, he swore that they will not enter his rest. Praise the Lord. So whatever we believe, we become. If you believe you are nothing, then you will become nothing. If you believe that Jesus died for your sins and sin has no hold on you anymore, then you will become that. Many of us have believed a lie. It is so easy for us to believe a lie than to believe the truth that is in Jesus Christ. They have called you stupid and you've believed it. And you have started to become stupid. Praise the Lord. Because it is so easy to believe that. Someone tells you you're bewitched, you believe it. And we also start to see this person is really bewitched. Because you have chosen to believe it, whatever you believe, you become. Praise the Lord. Now, if we take that same energy and we believe what Jesus did for us at the cross, I believe I'm the righteousness of God. I start to become righteous. I believe I'm the son of the most high God. I become a son indeed. And a son of God does not lack. A son of God does not suffer. A son of God has everything they need. Praise the Lord. He says in Romans that if I did not hold back my son, but I gave him up for you, how then with him can I, can I not give you everything? It is through Jesus that we have everything. He gave us the way, he's the door for us to become what Jesus has desired us to be. So we believe and we become. Praise the Lord. When I was growing up, our father died when we were still young. And my mom did not really have anything, so she took us to our grandmother's home. And while in that home, we used to sleep in a sitting room. And my grandmother would wake up every and she wakes up early, and she would chase us. So we, we never used to really have enough sleep. But this woman, she would walk every night. We are sleeping, and she starts to walk. Jesus is my husband. He's the father of my children. And he would say those things and he would laugh. The more she confessed it, the more Jesus became what she confessed. A woman that was a primary teacher bought land and built a big house in Buziga. Many people that had money could not do that. But the more she confessed it, the more Jesus did for her. He became a husband. He became the father of our children. We went to school. Our cousins that had money, our cousins that their fathers sent us away because they thought we were going to become a problem to them. We studied. We went through university. We called them for our parties and their, none of their children had made it. We called them for our weddings and none of their children has even ever made a wedding. Praise the Lord. So whatever she confessed became. So whatever we confess becomes, we believe what Jesus has done, it will become life for us. Praise the Lord. As others are worried about life, praise the Lord. Worried about tomorrow, worried about their children, for you, because you believe and you know he's got you. He even starts to show you your life before it happens. I have seen him show me things before they even happen. Praise the Lord. Praise King Jesus. 
So that is the goal. That is the Jesus that we are talking about. That we've got the best. Praise the Lord. Let us move on. So we see that they could not enter his rest because of unbelief. Chapter 4. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. Praise the Lord. Therefore, that promise is there for us. For the children of Israel, they were not lucky enough. But you and me are lucky. Praise the Lord. That promise of entering God's rest is there. It is available for you. It is available for me. It is true you can have a life that is stressful. Very true. That promise is available for you. Praise the Lord. But the Bible is saying fear. Let us fear. Lest any of you seem to have come short of it. Praise the Lord. Many of us are scared of death. Huh? Many of us are scared of sin. When you sin, you don't want to come close to people. When you sin, you no longer pray because you're scared. You have sinned. You cannot even come to the house of the Lord. But God is not mad at your sin. He is not. Because then why did Jesus go to the cross? He went to the cross and removed your sin, erased with a permanent mark. Like your sins are gone. So to God it's not your sin that is a bother. What breaks his heart is your unbelief. Praise the Lord. That's why the Bible is telling us fear. Let us fear unbelief. Not sin, but unbelief. Because every time you're scared of sin and not, and not believing, you will keep sinning. But every time you believe, the sin is no more. Because we sin because we do not believe. We sin because we do not believe. But when we believe, the sin will be no more. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. That is what Jesus did for us. The promise is there for you. You do not have to walk in unbelief anymore. Believe so that you enter that rest. So that you do not worry about things that bother the people of this world. Because you know, you are assured that in Jesus everything is covered. He says that how, how, come, that how can I not give you everything with him? Jesus is ready. God is ready to give you everything. All he wants from you is believe. Believe him. Praise the Lord. And enter his rest. So do not be scared to come to God because of sin. Be scared to approach him with an evil heart of unbelief. Praise the Lord. I know many of us Christians, once you're not committing sin, it is okay. Praise the Lord. But we are so many we are so many Christians that are non-believers. We are in church, but we have not believed God enough. So we move around in rotation. 40 years like the Israelites. Because of what? Unbelief. What you were in 2010 is what you are 10 years later. Praise the Lord. Yet we are created for better. We have the best but we are not even aware of it. Praise the Lord. Let's continue in chapter, verse 2. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they had did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who had it. Praise the Lord. The gospel has been preached. Christians know the word of God. You understand the sacrifice of the cross. But unless you take it with faith, it will not profit you. It will not hold any sense for you unless you take it with faith. Praise the Lord. We believe and then we become. 
We believe and then we possess. Praise the Lord. So let us be that promise is available. It is yours. It is mine. In Jesus we rest. Because worrying will not help you in any way. When you worry about money, the Bible says, does it come? No. Those are all signs of unbelief. When we cry about losing a job, does the job come back? No. But we find our rest in Jesus that even when everything is not okay, we can still rejoice in the hope that we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. That yes, today I did not have dinner, but I know the God I serve very soon is coming up for me. Praise the Lord. It is such a heart that yields miracles. Not the amount of prayers that you say. Not the many times you fast in a year. Not how dry fasting you do, but a heart that believes. Show me a man that believes and I'll show you a, a woman that prays. These are difference. You can pray and spend nights in church and someone just believes and God does for them. Because a heart that believes is a heart that God is looking for. It is a heart that enters his rest and it is that heart that yields miracles. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. You may not have so much, but you have hope in Jesus Christ. When he says, I, 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 have, I have, I got you, he really has you. And once you believe that, you, become, you start to enjoy the fullness of being in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Do not harden your heart if you hear these words. Do not harden your heart. It is not your sin that God is worried about. It is your unbelief. It is your unbelief. Every time you don't believe in his word, it's like an insult to him. Praise the Lord. Jesus is a faithful high priest. He went to God before us. He's still interceding on our behalf. And until we believe that, we'll continue moving in circles. We'll continue living life that is the same yesterday and forever. Praise the living God. Today, the promise stays for you to enter his rest. You rest from every work. You rest from every trouble. You rest from every tear and trust the God that created you and I. He that never spared his son and gave him freely to you, that he with his son will give you all things. Praise the Lord. As we wind up, I want us to put our heads down and think about those times that you have not believed. Think about the times that you had the word and never believed it. You know that Jesus died for you, but you still cannot believe it. And it's because of that unbelief that your life is the same. That is the gospel that we preach. Paul says that I choose to know nothing else among you except Jesus. Because he's everything. He is everything. Whatever life throws at you, Jesus is the answer. He's the way. He is the truth and his life. Praise the Lord. So that heart of unbelief is what God wants you to deal with today. Is what God wants to heal you from. The Bible calls it evil. So that means every time we do not believe, we carry evil within us. But the Bible says that a promise still remains to enter his rest for all those that believe. You are tired of how life is treating you. You're tired of working and working and getting nothing. You're tired of living in sin day 
and night. You're tired. You've buried people and you're tired. You visit his hospitals day in and day out. And you're tired. But God is saying, believe me. Whatever Jesus did on, on the cross was for you. He is ready. The promise remains to enter his rest. If you're tired of all those things, just believe and enter his rest. He is with arms open to receive you. But deal with that evil heart of unbelief.